Hi Floss Tube. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May with Artith Design and it's episode 42. I cannot believe it. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I love to talk about counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, crafting with kids, my adventures as an artist, designer, and mother of two young kids. <laughs> I hope you'll stick around to hear about my rather interesting week. I <laughs> and I would love to show you all of my crafting haul, my works in progress, my stitchy kindness that I got and an unboxing video. And yeah, just talking, talking about some fun crafting stuff with obviously emphasis on cross stitch. All right, I wanna start this episode by talking about the Sheep and Wool Festival that happened here in Maryland. And I was shocked that it was not just me, my husband, and the two children that went, but, you know, close to 10,000 other <laughs> fiber friends that went to this rather unique and large event, the Sheep and Wool Festival. And I made this necklace. It's missing a red little guy over here. He fell off, you know, kids. <laughs> I made this necklace to wear to the event. I went knowing that I couldn't really touch anything because of my sensitivity to wool, but I had a binder paper filled with notes of all of the different vendors that were there not wool related. And there were like button vendors, bison and silk weaving, there were the sheep that you could look at and pet. Of course, I didn't pet them, but my young ones did. <laughs> Just everything fiber related. I saw one lady I was walking by and she was doing Australian locker hooking. I went, are you doing Australian locker hooking? And she kind of like whipped her head around. I'm like, well, well, yes, you're the only person that knew what I'm doing. <laughs> and it was just, it was a lot of fun for the first 21 minutes of being there and then it quickly went downhill <laughs> and I say that because I did not anticipate the amount of people that were going to be at the event and when you're going someplace with small children you've got stuff right the backpack with the wipes and the diapers and the water bottle and then there's the, you know, I had a I have a soft structured carrier to actually carry my one of my kids in but the other one wanted to be in the stroller. So you just, you have a lot of stuff. When you are a parent of young children, you take up a lot of space. And as an American, I take up a lot of space as well. <laughs> That's one thing, living abroad, when I was in London, you could spot an American from a mile away because we command this like field of personal space. Well, when you're with your closest, you know, 10,000 other fiber friends, <laughs> There is no such thing as personal space. Oh my goodness. I, it, there were so many people after going into a couple, I couldn't go anywhere. You like physically cannot move. There's no, there's more people than space inside the vendor areas. So I got, I went to the vintage buttons. I went and did up, I got to a couple places and then my phone died. Not like battery went out, died. No, like my phone bit the dust, okay? Gone, finito. And I had this big master plan. I'm, I'm gonna take my video for my floss tube. I'm gonna take my pictures. I'm gonna have, this is gonna be amazing, right? <laughs> well, I ended up commandeering my husband's phone and taking some pictures, which I will insert in this video <laughs> to show you what, what, what was what <laughs> but it quickly became overwhelming i would love to show you the couple of things that i was able to purchase <laughs> let me yeah oh 
And here is my mug today. It is my desktop computer mug. In honor of today's episode, episode 42, I made me think of the supercomputer from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and the answer to life and the universe is 42. The computation 42. So there you go. It's got a back flip. I kind of got my glasses there. Okay. <laughs> I, I am so happy that I went to the Sheep and Wolf fi Fiber Festival. M my good friend, who is also my midwife, she told me about the Fiber Festival because she is a weaver and like weaves amazing things and it's magical and fantastic. So she told me that it was going to be busy, but I just did not fully comprehend the amount of people and people all around the United States and Canada were there. I wanted to make it to the, um, uh, the National Museum of the American Coverlet because that just sounded so intriguing, learning about the woven blankets of colonial historic America. Again, did not get to it. I got to maybe seven of the 53 booths that I put down uh, to go to. It's, it, it is what it is. So without further ado, I got this punch needle pattern and this picture as most say does not do this piece justice this was one of the booths that i wanted to stop at it is carried away designs and she had wool applique and punch needle and i oh my gosh she had it displayed so nicely she was in the main exhibit hall i was able to like cut in go to her booth and then cut right back out because you literally there was no walking room with wearing a kid like it didn't happen I got to see the models stitch. She stitched this with Valdani, the three the three ply Valdani threads, and she had it available in a pattern and also uh, just the pattern and then on the weaver's cloth pre-printed. So I bought the pre-printed weaver's cloth. So look at everyone. I am one step closer to my journey of being a punch needle embroiderer. <laughs> I love the bunny and the daffodils. I love me some daffodils. So I'm so excited. Now I just need the hoop and I need the needle. <laughs> Yay! So that was my first score. My second score, I really wanted to go to the cinnamon sticks or what is her? Cinnamon treasures. Yes, cinnamon treasures booth. I had researched her ahead of time and she doesn't really have a website and they focus on shows and they make the beautiful German molded beeswax and they're all cinnamon scented. Oh my goodness. If you could smell this through the camera, oh my gosh. So I got this really small little decorative ornament. She said after a couple of years, if it loses its luster, you would like put it in the microwave and then here there's 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 directions and then it'll come back to life and that this the art of molding beeswax um, there's museums that have molded beeswax they're over 300 years old and that it is an art and it not just used for your needles and it was so funny because the lady saw me wearing this and I got I got most people just made fun of my necklace <laughs> and the lady kind of was like oh do you just want a sheep necklace. And I said, no, I want a bee and I like bees and people use them, you know, the, the wax for their needle threaders and sh her face lit up and she showed me that she was darning some uh, slacks or pants or something and with the needle and she was showing me how she uses her own wax to mend clothes. So it was really neat. I, I feel like most of the vendors there were overwhelmed and stressed because there were literally so many people you can't keep an eye as like safety wise on your booth I mean for theft if because there's just so many people you can't you can't monitor your own booth and there's so many people like throwing money at you figuratively and literally that you're like a little so everyone's just kind of on guard but I felt like telling her about cross stitchers and their love of the waxed <laughs> the wax goodies that really deflated the situation so I'm really happy to get that and I got her show schedule I also went to a button vendor and I got some good pictures at the button vendor and she had some amazing things and the only person to compliment my necklace. 
Not that I need outside validation, but it, it was nice. <laughs> I got four, she had so many beautiful buttons. She had bake light buttons and wooden buttons, antlers and all. I ended up getting this circa 1870s. I got a set of four and I was able to pick through of the bone buttons. I just find these really fascinating. I had always assumed that these were glass and no, nope, they're, they're bone. So I, I got those. <laughs> and as I'm walking, there was this quilt booth, um, the heavy wool blankets, like saddle blankets and such. Of course, I couldn't touch anything, but on the ground, they had all the rusty, crusty gems of like goodies and everything on the ground was $5. And I saw this little box and I went, yup. And I picked it up and I handed $5 over. Look at this little bunny. It's got some nice chipping here, but it's a hexagon box painted with the rabbit. The inside is also painted I love me some boxes. So this came home with me. I really like it. It'll look a very folk art. It's not signed, so I'm not sure who made it. And then I went to the B Folks website, or website, the B Folks booth. And they are out of Mount Airy, the B Folks. And I got their candies, the lemon honey candy, and delicious very happy that I picked these up and then <laughs> fed the kids did all that oh earlier in the day I actually ran into another floss tube friend I Lola I ran into Lola I like waving her down and getting in her face I'm like hi hi <laughs> I know you <laughs> I'll link her channel below she's the only person at the festival that I knew that I saw my phone, like I said, died. So I was not able to connect with um, other people. <laughs> oh, so I saw that and then it was the la very last booth that we stopped at after feeding the kids <sighs> was the Buffalo Wool Company. Oh my. Let me just say, this patch at $3 was literally the only thing that I could afford at this booth. And it was the only fiber that I ended up touching at the booth. I had no idea that bison, the American bison, are sheared and you can make beautiful fiber with a mixture of bison and silk. And the proprietor of the of the lovely tent of heavenly goodness let me touch some of the fiber and it is glorious it was amazing so I walked I tried my very best to walk in and see if there was any like sample bits or any tiny little things that I could take back because the feel I have never felt that texture before again no wool so it would have been safe and the skeins were like $65 a skein, which I don't knit. I don't do anything like that. So I, please forgive me. I don't know the cost of materials and stuff like that. But again, this is the only thing <laughs> that I was able to afford and it did come home with me. I, I love the patch and I will, I'll find a really cool place to put this. Oh, the light is changing. I'm sorry. Let me see if I can adjust. I don't know if I made that worse. <laughs> okay, uh, I had a great time at the Sheep and Wool Festival, albeit uh, we had to leave when your kids don't wanna use the restroom facilities there and you're running out of time and you know what I mean by that, it's time to go, which it was a blessing in disguise because my, like I said, my phone had died. So we ended up going to the mall, uh, which is, the, the festival was at Howard County Fairgrounds, which is, so Howard County, I don't know how to explain it. It's in, it's still in central Maryland. It's like an hour from, 45 minutes from Washington, D.C. And they have a big mall area. So we went there to just to see about getting a replacement phone for me. Well, 
the one hour journey turned into like a seven hour journey. Needless to say, I now have a new phone <laughs> to film floss tube and to chronicle my work a little better. And boy, was that an adventure. <sighs> yes, so that was my Saturday. And Sunday was just recovery mode. The kids had having been out from 8.30 in the morning until after seven o'clock at night, they were, they were done, right? So nobody slept well. Sunday was just kind of a rest recovery day. I started working on finalizing some stuff, did some finished work, did a lot of ironing. I was at the ironing board a lot, getting some stuff ready. And I'm just really, I, so I've got some really cool stuff to show you. <laughs> and I want to thank those of you who told me to uh, apply for one of the ornament contests that a magazine's doing. I I I made a pattern. I stitched the pattern. It's ironed, it's prepped, it's all ready. Now I just have to sew it up. The design requirements say that it has to be, you have to photograph it as either a pillow ornament or as a flat ornament. And I'm choosing to make mine into a pillow ornament. I can't show it to you, but I am putting myself out there and I'm gonna submit it to the magazine again. Uh, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. And the worst thing that this magazine can tell me is no, right? Hey, I spell checked my work. So this time I'm submitting it to a magazine when it's spell checked. So that's a plus. <laughs> All right, I told you about the sheep and wool festival. I told you about my phone fiasco. Oh my gosh, hot mess. The kids got to go to the Disney store, so that there's something. <laughs> We're trying to find a SIM card for this phone because I'm not on a contract plan. <laughs> so that whole thing, a SIM card. We had to go to four different locations looking for a SIM card. I mean, just the whole thing was a hot mess. But I have a phone. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I wanna, I have so much to show you, okay. We're gonna still do haul because I did stop at a couple stores and got some haul. Uh, I did some crafty stuff besides the necklace. I have mail call. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. Okay. I think we should do mail call. All right, yes, okay. I got in the mail Trish from Threads Entwined sent me my mail and I'm so excited. Oh, I, this is awesome. I, we had done, I did her, anyway, I got mail from Trish. I, I ordered the Pat's Favorite Needle, the 24, the size 24 needle because I wanted to try it out with the Sulky to see what it was like on 28 count fabric and 14 count Ada, what the size 24 needle was like, because I've been stitching with size 26 and size 28. Oh my, this is amazing, amazing. This is the Pat's favorite needle, Pat Carson. Many of you might know her. She was the designer for Designs of Gloria and Pat. She pretty much, I would say eight out of 10 patterns from the 70s, 80s, and 90s were produced by her company. She was the first to license the, or the first licensee with Precious Moments back in the day. So she was the first person to really put Precious Moments out on the market. So when people say, oh, stitching Precious Moments, yeah, you can thank Pat Carson for that and Pat's favorite needle. She manufactures, she works with a company out of Japan that create these needles exclusively for her. She has a private label through the Japanese company. So she, this is hers and they're amazing and I highly recommend them. I am not affiliated with Pat in any way, nor have I met her in real life. Maybe one day if I go to Nashville and she's there, that would be really lovely to meet her. Her designs, um, one of her, the first things I ever stitched was a Pat Carson design. So I feel like she is helping to continue the needlework 
industry, while she's not designing, she's still affiliated through her needles in every stitch. So there's Pat Carson needles. I got, I, I was not expecting this, but I got a gentle art. I got a really nice um, color. It's like a gray white. And then I was so excited to get this. After seeing Beth Twist talk about her stickers, I, because I love me some stickers. I am, I was a 90s kid all about the Lisa Frank stickers, give me the stickers, the scratch and smell stickers. I I love stickers, okay? So to get stickers is like the cat's pajamas, okay? So this was awesome to see how they were created and work because I want stickers in my life. I feel like I need to make some stickers. Beth Twist, Heartstring Samplery, she has inspired me and I know I watched her floss two video a couple months ago when she talked about market and she said it was really intense creating them, packaging them, labeling them, selling them at wholesale. I, I, I heard her when she said that. So I understand that if I go on down the sticker rabbit hole, that it might be a lot of work, but I feel like every, we need to have more stickers in our lives. So <laughs> there's that. I got these scissors. I haven't even tried them yet. These are the red bronze Victorian scissors. My little black scissors that I have are really dull. I need to get them sharpened or retire them. This is the pretty much the exclusive pair of scissors that I've used for the last two years. I got my red pair um, at the stitching post in February for my birthday but I can't get right up against the cloth to snip, like to, to snip the, the thread really close while doing the pin stitch. So I needed another pair. So I'm gonna try these out. Again, these are my favorite. I love them. I actually got them at a, I got them secondhand at a quilt yard sale. Literally the sign on the side of the road two years ago said quilt yard sale. They had my favorite words, quilt, yard sales, three words. I love those words and you put them all together. I made my husband veer that car over. So I got, <laughs> I got the scissors. So I have these new ones to try. And then I ordered some fabric. I ordered three sets of fabric and I could not be happier with it. I ordered the 32 count Abecedarian by R&R &R Reproductions. Now, I had never heard of Abbasidarian until Pretty Southern, Linda Jo talked about it at length in several of her videos. And I said, okay, I need to just try this out in real life. So I got it that. Then I got this gun metal uh, by Weeks Dye Works. I have never felt nor have I ever stitched on Weeks Dye Works before. And it made me think of the chalkboard designs and the chalk doing something instead of doing it on black, doing it on more of that charcoal gray and seeing what that's like. So I'm going to see about designing something using the weeks and I have not even done a, t a test stitch on this. This is, this is all new. And then I got two more, pa I got two patterns and another piece of fabric. I could not wait y'all. I got this in the mail yesterday. I could not wait for my floss tube video. I normally film on Mondays in order to edit and then give them closed captioning enough time and everything. I used to manually type out my closed captioning and edit my closed captioning. Um, I, I stopped doing that about six weeks ago and I apologize to anybody who liked my edited captions. I I physically cannot, I don't have enough time in the day, nor do I have um, the money to pay someone to edit my closed captioning. I, I really apologize if I'm inconveniencing any of you. Um, we have closed captioning on in my household uh, due to hearing um, impairment. Please know that I am not, I don't take that lightly. Uh, I'm doing the best that I can and I appreciate, super appreciate you hanging out with me at floss on um, floss tube um, minus my edited closed captioning.
Okay, so with that being said, I did not film Monday night. It's Tuesday today. Hi, May 7th, <laughs> 2019. I, so I could not wait and I started right away. I got this little bag at the thrift store. It's another one of those little cosmetic bags, but it had like this fun 8-bit art look to it. And so I put my, uh, put my threads in and I got, because it was on the website. Trish must have heard my call for wanting the second Prairie Schooler. Here she is. I got her. So I decided, and I immediately, I mean, I pulled out the Pat's Favorite Needle, size 24, and I immediately started stitching that bird. So I am doing it on the same piece of fabric. I, I left 10 stitches between the birds, the beaks here, and they're going to be facing each other like this. And then once I get it all stitched up, I'm using the same color palette here and here, and then I'm probably going to add in between both of them more flowers and tie it all together. And I could not be happier with this. Again, size 24, Pat's favorite needle on a piece of thrift store 28 count sky blue even weave. The threads are sulky. I'm stitching, so this, this stitch I did two strands for the dress and one strand for the bird and it added depth to it, but my the lesson that I learned was I don't like stitching two strands of Sulky on 28 because it's the equivalent of four strands on 28 and it was just too bulky for me. So I'm sticking with the one strand, which is the equivalent of two strands of embroidery floss. So one strand of thread, two strands of embroidery floss. And so I'm just gonna do one strand on this piece. I have, kind of hemming and hawing with keeping the color palette. It calls for red, and as you see here, this is a fuchsia pink, and I don't know if having a pink tomato will work, or if I will incorporate a red and then having the strawberry be pink. I don't know, I'm still playing along. I'm gonna try to get the bird done, and then I'll go from there and see about extending out the color palette. But I could not be happier, I'm so excited. And then, a shout out to Megan, wide-eyed stitching, uh, wide-eyed stitcher. She, I've been following her on Instagram for a while and she just started her own floss tube channel. I think she's on episode four or something. I'll link her below. But she is in Maryland like me. We have not met in real life, but she has a real, she showed last year on her Instagram this gorgeous stitching and she has a Maryland themed or Chesapeake Bay themed wool and I loved it and I had wanted this Starbucks mug and it's a Maryland Starbucks mug featuring the Chesapeake Bay so I have the Starbucks mug I have the spoon rest you all know I like lighthouses too right so I have the Chesapeake Bay lighthouse spoon rest and it's got all of the, so Maryland, uh, Virginia, Delaware, the, the encompassing Chesapeake Bay, Chesapeake Bay watershed. And so they have all of the lighthouses here. You see down there, it says comfort, as in the comfort lighthouse. Well, Megan was stitching last year, the carriage house samplings lighthouse, and I loved it. And so this has been on my wish list for over a year and I finally, I finally bought it. Again, at Threads Entwined, had the copy of this. I love it. It's 131 by 121, I believe. 130 by 121 and I love it so much. So what I ended up doing last night because I couldn't sleep because I was so dang excited, I started stitching on it. I love it. I am using a piece of fabric that I got Again, could not wait to show you. It is the R and R Reproductions Sea Fog, and it's 36 count, and I love it so much. So I started stitching, and I'm using a 28 count, a 28 needle, and I threaded, and I'm using the sulky. So I started. So I have a little bit here of the the wave and the start of her arm. 
and the the body and the tail of the mermaid i i don't know what caused me to start in the lower corner because i like to usually stitch from the top down and here i'm stitching from the bottom up I don't know again I'm an impulse starter I just want to start all the things I have no rhyme or reason I just I want to start it now I love everything <laughs> so what I ended up doing was making a working copy of my lighthouse pattern and I taped up I taped it together because it came it's actually formatted beautifully the original uh, but I didn't want to mark it I like to highlight and use pen mark and then I ended up making a color conversion for uh, the threads using all sulky. And I am really excited. I feel like it, the colors, they went through pretty well. I, I, so far so good on the sea fog. I think it looks awesome. Let me see if I can hold it up. Um, so the sea fog's got like a teal green look to it. So I am so excited for this piece. And I am going to make like a Maryland Chesapeake Bay and themed wall or decor or hutch as it were. I will say that coming from California, I was very Pacific Ocean you know, the gray whales, the gray whale migration, the kelp forest, Monterey Bay Aquarium. I am very, like when I did my nursery for my kids, it's Pacific Ocean themed. I sound like an ocean elitist. Anyway, now having been in Maryland for a little over a decade, I am embracing the Chesapeake Bay watershed <laughs> and incorporating another waterway into my life. And I'm really stoked about that. So those are my two projects. I have some other goodies on the list of th things that I'm doing that I cannot wait to show you. I, it's been a great week. I want to thank all of you for your beautiful and lovely comments to me uh, about the icky, icky stuff that happened. And like I've said before, just keep moving forward. And I super appreciate it. I want to also... I give a huge shout out again to Megan. I want to shout out Stephanie from Pam and Steph. Just keep stitching. Steph did her May stitching episode with her mom and they showed all of the different starts they're going to do for the month of May. And she is going to start banana pants party. Ah! And um, Monique said she was going to start banana pants and so I'm just really excited to see all the stitching of banana pants. Ah, yay! Again there's a lighthouse and all the things. I also want to shout out Cheryl of Tranquil Stitches out of West Virginia. I watched her video immediately. It came out last week after I'd already filmed of course though but it came out and I watched it and at the end she shows her project bags. Oh yes, she featured the Amanda May bag. Y'all, she made, she used my fabric right here. I don't know if you can see my egg fabric next to Barbara Anna. She used my egg fabric and made project bags and they're awesome. I, she is still the first and only person to buy my fabric. So I feel extremely honored that not only did she buy fabric from me, she then made it into project bags and then showed the floss tube world my fabric. Ah, so thank you, Cheryl. I super appreciate it. What a wonderful gift to give somebody. I love, thank you. <laughs> I also want to give a shout out to Michelle Bindi Stitchy on today's Instagram story. Today is Tuesday, May 7th. She featured the shirt she got in the mail. She ordered it. I have a, uh, I licensed my artwork with Amazon and she bought one of the t-shirts that I designed especially just for her. Well, y'all can get this shirt <laughs> if you want this shirt, but I got, I made a shirt inspired by Michelle Garrett and it is armadillo in a donut. I love to listen to Michelle when she does her videos 
and she was doing a little thing and she made a quip about how her life would be complete if there were more animals inside of donuts and she's naming off all the cute little donut animal you know cat and a donut dog and a donut you, you know right and she <laughs> she said I just cannot wait until there's an armadillo in a donut and I said oh, Michelle I, I can do that I can make that happen so I did and I put it on a shirt I also have a tentative um, put it on a notebook offer for her and I'm gonna send her a notebook but we're working on some other stuff before that notebook goes live so again thank you all so much do you want to see what else I got this week yeah okay no buttons can travel alone I got some buttons these are contemporary buttons okay not no, nothing fancy here but I got these at a thrift store and they have like the baggies of the little buttons that you know you get the extra buttons that come with your garments. I am a firm believer that you can never have enough buttons. <laughs> At the another thrift store, I picked up the Charles Craft 28 count Irish linen in the tube. And as all of you have so beautifully let me know, always check the tube to see if there has been a stitch in it or not because sometimes people find fully stitched pieces in these Charles Craft tubes. People stitch them and they roll them back up. Well, this is an unused piece of Irish linen and I'm really excited. I paid more for it than I normally would have paid for a secondhand piece of fabric. But I actually have come to realize that I love the Irish linen. My a um, Easter chick that I did, um, my design, I stitched on Irish linen and I just, I really like it. So I got that and <laughs> this was the score of the week. As many of you know, my um, family home uh, burned down in the, um, the fire last year in Paradise, California. And with that, all of my art, all of my mother's sewing, all, everything is gone. It's all gone. So in my post minimalist phase of life as a maximalist, I see something, it reminds me of my childhood and I, if I have the money to buy it, I buy it. So when I was growing up, my mom had one of these and she still has it, had it. And it's one of the sewing boxes and it's missing some pieces. It's missing, but these, the main component parts work. And so I got a vintage sewing box and I am so excited. And the ladies at the thrift store were so nice. And we were talking about history and how their mothers had this box. And it was, it was really lovely. Um, so, um, <laughs> I, excuse me, I got, I got this box and like I said, it reminds me of my mom. Um, Mother's Day is coming up. Um, I wish um, I wish all the mothers this upcoming weekend um, I hope that you have a beautiful Mother's Day whether you whether you have children alive or who have passed um, or if you're a pet mommy I hope that you have a beautiful weekend. Um, many of us don't have mothers anymore or have mothers but don't have contact with our mothers and so it can be a painful weekend. Um, I just hope that you have a, a beautiful weekend in whatever you endeavor that you choose to do. Um, uh, I'm excited. I'm gonna try to do some crafting with my kids and Keep the keep the the holiday um, happy and jovial. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this episode before I start tearing all over the place. I have more to show you. I'm just gonna hold off until next week. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I'm gonna insert some photos from the festival and just general stuff. 
Thank you for being with me on my 42nd episode. <laughs> uh, may you have a beautiful week of stitching. Take care. Here is the size 24 needle, the Pat's favorite needle with the gold eye. I used one strand of Sulky and I'm going to stitch this on a 28 count fabric that I got secondhand with my Prairie School Fairies. Here is my itinerary for the Sheep and Wool Festival and on my way there, of course, we had to stop and wait for the trains to pass. I was so excited to be at the festival. I am wearing my Star Wars shirt and custom necklace. I stopped at the button vendor. Oh my goodness, amazing buttons. So many shapes, sizes, eras, and price points. And I ended up just getting the bone 19th century buttons. I went through the stack there and found what I wanted I walked away from the button vendor and found the $5 for old stuff <laughs> booth <laughs> and there they had this cross stitch. I left it behind but I thought it was really precious. They had a lot of the rusty crusty good stuff. Next was the cinnamon beeswax ornaments. Absolutely fantastic. I'm really glad I stopped by her shop and it smelled lovely. We went next to the sheep petting area. Of course, I didn't touch anything, but boy, oh boy, was it amazing to see all the different varieties of sheep, their colors, and the breeds. The last booth I stopped at was the Buffalo Wool Company, and I got to touch buffalo and silk blend fiber. Here is a buffalo, or a bison, excuse me, skin outside the booth they had husband parking yep in the main exhibit hall I saw some wool applique and picked up my very first punch needle pattern from uh, carried away designs she had some beautiful threads and fibers and this latch hooking just really wonderful things we had to cut our trip short and walk back to the car which was a long 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 way Oh my goodness, and here I am, not as excited as I was when we got there to get to the car. On the way home, we went through Ellicott City, where the Enchanted Forest used to be located, and now it's just the king left. And here is a cross-stitch piece that got left behind that I could not save. I hope you have a good week, and see you next week.